Yeah, you've been asking for this for a long time. And today we're gonna do another Lokotlik tutorial. No, but jokes aside, you've probably noticed that I already posted such videos. But since then, Steam settings changed a bit. And yet most of you don't know how to apply the square datum settings. So I thought it would be a great idea to make an updated version. But before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button if you enjoy my latest content. And yeah, I started to stream again. Let's go. So first thing first, you need to apply this chill guy background. So as you guys know, I'm a Steam user. Nevertheless, these settings can be applied for Epic Games users as well. And there's one trick I'll be showing later in this video, so stay tuned. First thing first, plug in your controller. Once it's done, this will appear. Click this icon here. Here, go to Edit Layout. Click the joysticks. Go to this gear button. And you can see dead zones here. Once you're here, you can see there are various settings. And here, you can see there are three possibilities. You have cross, circle and square. In my opinion, the square dead zone is one of the best dead zones out there, since you can do smooth flip cancels without any interruption. You have a circle dead zone here, which I used to play on. Might be good for air dribbling, because the shape of the area around the left stick is basically circle, right? However, it's not really ideal for flip cancels and for stalls. Cross dead zone is something similar to square. I know some players use it, but if you'd like to be really consistent with flip cancels and creative resets, I would go with square. Here we have outer ring comment radius. To be fair, guys, I'm not sure how to describe this. However, what I observed is that it's like the part near the ridge. So it's the area when it's not doing anything, I guess. You know, when the move stops, basically. If you know what this does exactly, let me know in the comments. You have a bunch of settings here, which you don't really need to touch, in my opinion. Maybe the response curve is great. I have 170. It's basically how fast it will start to react. So it's like the inner dead zone, inner sensitivity. So you can play around with this. However, I wouldn't set it too low since it can cause you like a drift stick or something. I mean, technically, if you have really small drift stick and you put this higher, you can fix this drift stick. And this is quite important stick response curve so i have custom curve but you have some presets here you have linear aggressive relaxed wide and extra wide a lot of players actually recommend aggressive which can be faster for certain movements and flip cancels however again i wouldn't really try to be faster since most of the time when we are going for creative resets we actually want to be precise instead of fast it can work for you, but again, just experiment with this, then set what you like the most. Don't really listen what other people tell you, okay? I have this on max, I guess that makes sense. And we're good to go. It's the D-O-double-G. So guys, as I promised, I'll show you my updated in-game settings as well. As you can see here, it haven't changed, and the reason is the square dead zone. The square dead zone in general makes the gameplay more smoother and the response faster. So it means that the left stick gets more sensitive in my opinion, rather than playing on circle dead zone. 50 control dead zone seems insane, but as I said in my previous dead zone video, it actually makes sense why I have it on 0.50. I'm the kind of player that enjoys to, you know, twist with the left stick a lot. So I mean, yeah, your hand might hurt after a while. What about these settings? Aerial sensitivity is just the sensitivity in the air, okay? And steering sensitivity is just the sensitivity on the ground. It works the opposite than control dead zone, okay? It means when you have really low steering sensitivity or aerial sensitivity, that your car or left stick respectively is not much sensitive on the ground or in the air. However, if I would put this to 10, the left stick is sensitive to every little movement in the air. It's about preference, guys, okay? And just put it how you feel like it, you know. But again, when you find a perfect or the most cleanest dead zones for you, 
make sure to stick to them and don't really change them. If you want to stay consistent, I'd find one dead zone settings that would be for your style. Control dead zone is quite opposite to aerial and steering sensitivity. When you have really low control dead zone, your left stick is sensitive to every little movement, no matter you are in the air or driving on the ground. If you put it around 20 to 50, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with that. Set what you prefer the most. So some of you might know that there are a bunch of ways how to apply the square dead zone settings on Epic Games. Mactiv also did a video about this matter. However, you might be Xbox One controller user like me. I'd recommend using Steam for this as well. Let me show you what I mean. Epic Games launcher in Steam. How oh, is this possible? Click add game, add a non-Steam game and you basically find it in the list or you just browse Epic Games. Okay, once you find that you add this. Epic Games Launcher will appear here, you repeat the same process. Plug in your controller, click the button here and you change the dead zone like we did before. But there's one thing you need to follow after this. When you're launching Epic Games or Rocket League, don't go directly to Epic Games. You need to play Epic Games here from Steam, okay? So at first open Epic Games through Steam and then play Rocket League. So it might not be working on the first go, so make sure to restart your computer after doing this. Oh yeah, and by the way, these are my camera settings if you didn't know. And that's everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one and perhaps learned something new. And if you would find some troubles, let me know on my Discord. Oh, by the way, and finally, I have a Discord server. The link is in the description and make sure to show some love to my Discord mods since they did a lot of hard work. And see you around in the next video.